Hey guys, I'm Matt Hernandez. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to take a shot like this, capturing motion using shutter drag and rear curtain sync. Okay, so one of the keys to capturing a shutter drag like that with a light trail is that you have to have little to no ambient. So we're obviously in the studio and we have some window light coming in from the, the window over here, which will be camera right whenever I'm shooting. It's not a ton. We do have some shades pulled down over it. Ideally, it would probably be better to have it a little bit more dark, but I think that it's gonna work like this. So we're gonna leave it for now. If I need to put up a V flat or something to cover that up later, I can. So the whole key of a shutter drag is that you have to open the shutter for a longer period of time than normal, which would normally give you a blurry image but we're gonna add in a studio strobe. So we have a Westcott FJ400 behind my V-flat over here. And we've got an Octa L, which is a 48 inch Octa box with two layers of diffusion. So that's gonna be our key light, which is gonna fire at the end of the shutter when it closes. So that's why it's called rear curtain sync. So I check out my other video on front curtain sync shutter drag also. But today we're gonna talk about rear curtain. So it's gonna, the strobe is gonna fire at the end. So basically the shutter is gonna be open for half a second to two seconds. It's gonna capture the motion because we have an LED back here, a Westcott Solix with a green gel on it and a one by four strip box. Now this is not a rapid box strip box. It's an older strip box that has the spokes that you put into the, um, into the Solix. So you actually have to put it together. It doesn't pop open like a rapid box does. So it's a little bit harder to put together. Still not a big deal, but we're gonna, we're gonna have that as our LED. So that's gonna be the constant light that's gonna be on the whole time. So she's, our dancer is gonna move when I open my shutter and start the picture. And that LED is gonna be on her, so it's gonna capture a light trail with her fans and her movement. She's gonna move left to right. And then at the end, when she ends up on this side, where I have, I have a piece of tape on the ground to mark, I have a spot for where she starts and a spot, spot where she's gonna end. So when she ends right there, the strobe's gonna fire at the end of the picture. So it's gonna freeze her because the strobe, whenever it fires, no matter what shutter speed you're at, it's gonna freeze the action at the end. So the question is, are you gonna have blur before that or not? So I've got the Sony A7R5 here to shoot with, and I have the 72 to 200, the newer one, 2.8, Sony also. And then we've got the FJX3S for Sony, the remote, the Westcott remote. And like I said, we have the FJ400 and we have the Solix to get the motion. So now we want, we've got to figure out our, our settings and I've already pre-lit this and tried it out first. So I know that I want to shoot at a two second shutter speed. So that's going to let two seconds of ambient light in to let her continue to get through her movement. And that's I, I, a lot of times I'll do, I do this with football players and basketball players sometimes, and I'll do a half a second and actually do that with front, cur front curtain sync instead. It's a little bit easier to capture um, the images and keep them sharp that way because I'm focusing at the beginning and the strobe's firing at the beginning. It's a little bit harder to do it this way, but it, it honestly looks maybe a little bit cooler because the light trail is gonna be over the whole frame and then she's gonna be sharp at the end. But that's kind of the key is that you have to get it in focus. It's a little bit hard to whenever the ambient's low like this. So what I did, the camera, this camera has amazing autofocus. I could have tried to track her the whole time, but she's actually starting out of camera. The reason I'm doing that is because I've seen this done before and it, and it still looks good, but whenever the person starts the movement in frame, then you're gonna see them frozen just a little bit where they're still before they start moving with the LED. So it'll be like a green outline around her and then the light trail. And then at the end, the frozen picture with the strobe where she's nice and sharp. So it almost be like there's two versions of her, which can look okay, but I think it looks better when the light trail is just movement from the beginning all the way to the end until she's frozen. So that's why I'm having her start out of frame. So because of that, it's hard to catch the focus if she just comes into the frame. So I have her stand, I'm gonna have her stand on the ending mark there, the piece of tape, and I'm gonna pre-focus and then leave my camera in the same position. And then she's gonna walk out of frame, I'm gonna count down and then she's gonna start the movement and hopefully get a really cool picture at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down and start shooting now. So as far as settings go, like I said, I kind of went through this beforehand to make sure that I had them dialed in. And it does take it does take some trial and error to see what works. What I found is half a second's probably the shortest and two seconds for the shutter speed. And two seconds is probably the longest that you need. And I've been anywhere from ISO 100 to ISO 400. And then the F-stop, I've been down to F4 before. 
and I'm up at F8 right now. So F8 is gonna give me more in focus, which is good. So you wanna try to keep that higher. The ISO is not that big of a deal because the noise control on these cameras, the noise reduction is so good. So, or not noise reduction, but you, don't, you just don't get a lot of noise until you get up to like at least past 1600. So even if you had to go up to that, it wouldn't be that big a deal, but I don't have to. In this case, I'm gonna be shooting with a one second shutter speed, F8, ISO 250, and then my white balance is on flash. So again, I've got my 70 to 200, so I've got to back up just a little bit to make sure I get her in the, in the full frame. I'm gonna have her start, I've got her marked. So I've got a piece of tape, on um, two pieces of tape down, and have her start on the left side behind that piece of tape, and then she's gonna to go to the right side, my camera right, and that piece of tape, so she knows where to begin and where to end, and then the strobe is gonna fire at the end. It's kind of feathered, so it's not gonna hit the background, or it's gonna hit the background as little as possible. Even though it's a black background, we still don't want it to be straight on because it can it can show up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit down and keep my camera down on the ground and then start directing her and start shooting. All right, Kayla, so you're gonna have about one second to complete the whole movement. And then if you're kicking your leg up at the end, that's where it's gonna end right there. So that's it's, that needs to be about a second long. So, and can you go, so I'm gonna pre-focus because she's gonna start out of frame so that the light trail comes from the outside of the frame in and it doesn't give her like a little outline of a green, little green calla in the bottom left of the frame, which can, if I started her in the frame, that's what would happen. So Cal, if you wanna go over there and stand right behind that tape. So I'm zoomed all the way out as far as I can. It's 70 millimeters. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one, two, three, and say go. And then when I say go is when you start, okay? So start out a little bit more, like back up just a little bit. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. And it would probably help if I set my flash to rear curtain sync and not front curtain. <laughs> so hang on one second, let me switch that back. Okay, so you, I did have to switch that in my camera to rear curtain. Okay, all right, ready? Three, two, one, go. Nice, that was really good. Okay, let's try again. Three, two, one, go. That looks awesome. I'm gonna turn my strobe up. I've got my strobe set on, I had it on five and a half power. The FJ400s have go from one to nine, so it has nine top stops of power. I'm gonna, I was a little bit underexposed, so I'm gonna go to six and a half on the power now. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. That's awesome. Try to come a little bit further this way. Otherwise, that was really good. All right, three, two, one, go. Sweet. Okay, let me make sure that, I've, that I'm good and sharp. So I'm gonna zoom in. That's one thing that you gotta make sure you do on these is that because you're leaving the shutter open, you know, and if she's not moving in the right area, it could look like she is and maybe she's not, but if she's, if she's not, it could be a little bit out of focus. So you got really got to zoom in to like three or 500% to make sure that she's sharp and she is. So, all right. So I think that one's good. All right. That does it. Thanks for watching. If you got anything out of it, I hope you did. I would appreciate it if you could like, comment, share. You can ask questions in the comments. Uh, be sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. There's going to be a lot more to come and we'll see you next time.